Namaskar, welcome and pleasant morning to everyone of you. I'm glad to be a part of this three in one conference which is happening for a period of two days. Friends, we are passing through a very important time, historically important, critically important, strategically important, scientifically important, and technologically also important period of time. So far, we were believing and we were forced to think and we were forced to talk that Mother Earth contains India and India is present in Mother Earth. Now the history is changed. Moon also contains India and India is also present in the moon. This has been made possible by India and by Indian scientists using indigenous technologies. Once upon a time, we Indians, we believed that any Indian technology should be globally accepted, globally benchmarked, and it should be globally renowned also, so that it will be considered as a great impactful technology. After some time, we started believing that every Indian technology should have a component called indigenization. But now, the team of ISO scientists, they proved that both are equally important, and it is possible that with indigenization, we can create global impact. And therefore, this is the right time. In the words of Honorable Prime Minister, Yehi samay hai, sahi samay hai. This is the right time that all of us should put all our energy together, be it an academia or a research organization or an industry. <coughs> Are we all really fully geared up to make this kind of a tripatriate agreement? Can we just mark this golden triangle? Can we make this collaboration and consortia a little more powerful to address not only because India is rich with coal mines. So even though we have a huge hunting exercise for solar energy, of course solar energy should be thoroughly, thoroughly utilized. Because my background research is only lithium battery. I'm a renewable energy person. But still I vote for coal. Why? Because countries having lot of lot of coal mines. And therefore, this country should really make use of all the coal. Now, second one is petroleum. We have a huge dependence on other countries for our petroleum related, um, I would say, purchase. So the import substitution should happen in a big way with respect to petroleum energy. And we are now coming up with a kind of, to what extent, a kind of a biojet fuel or a green fuel or a biodiesel could be blended along with this petroleum or diesel products by means of which you can reduce our uh, import, import burden, I would say. So there again, we have another institute because with respect to coal, we have one institute called Simfer in Dhanbad. For petroleum, we have another institute, IIP, which is very much close by Dharadun. So there they are even converting cooked used oil. That is from the kitchen, they collect the cooked oil. And the oil could also be utilized as a biojet fuel. And this is the best example for waste to belt also. So one is petroleum import, uh, that heaviness could be, burden could be reduced, number one. And now we have succeeded up to 15% of blending of green fuel, and now we'll be just slowly increasing it to 20 and 25 percentage also. This we call it as blending of fuels. And when you just think about the third form of energy, which is hydrogen energy, whole globe is now celebrating hydrogen. Country has introduced uh, India's hydrogen mission, national hydrogen mission, which was launched by MNRE, Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. But before even country launched this green hydrogen mission, we from CSAR, one and a half year back, we came up with our own hydrogen mission, which we call it as H2T. So here we are coming up with three different major areas, how best hydrogen could be generated, how best hydrogen could be utilized, and what are the different ways by means of which hydrogen could be stored. So for hydrogen generation, like everybody was talking about, it is not only electrolysis. So it, again, in electrolysis, we have number of number of electrolysis. PEM electrolyzer could be utilized. Anion exchange membrane electrolyzer could be used. And alkali exchanges could be used. So you can definitely get hydrogen by all these means apart from seawater electrolysis. Because all the time, my, uh, the previous speakers were talking about seawater electrolysis and seawater for its other purposes, if not for drinking purpose. So seawater electrolysis also 
in this country, lot of research is going on. And the four days are not so far off. We will come up with a number of success stories with respect to hydrogen generation techniques. Also, we are working with few companies. So those who are here and interested in all these technologies, please feel free to approach CSAR. And we would love to work with you in whichever mode you want us to really contribute to your requirements. And similarly, when you talk about the hydrogen for its application, again, we have number of technologies with respect to fuel cell, whether it is PEM fuel cell or any kind of a fuel cell, solid oxide fuel cell. Even in the case of PEM fuel cell, if it is an open cathode, closed cathode, any form of fuel cell, we have the technology. Already we worked with a number of industries, including KPIT, Thermax, Reliance, so we already worked with these companies and the success formula of CSAR and KPIT, we demonstrated two road shows. One is fuel cell powered car three years back and fuel cell powered bus just last year. And bus and their stack also. And now we are working in a big way with other con companies also with respect to different forms of electrolyzers also. So whether it is hydrogen generation, already some industries are there. And if it is for hydrogen uh, application, yes, fuel cell related technologies we have. And now the very important portion is, where are you going to store this hydrogen? Even today, hydrogen cylinders, we have a huge dependence on other countries for its type four cylinder. So in India, type three cylinders, we have already reached the success, but type four cylinders, yes, CSAR is into it, I think. Within another maybe one year or so, we will be able to come up with tri four cylinders also. And therefore, our reduction, our dependence on other countries will also get reduced. So this is how, how much indigenization could be utilized. We are trying our level best. And also, people were talking about the connection between water, energy, and waste. Now, uh, for energy conversion, we are working in a big way with respect to agri-photovoltaics. We are working in a big way in terms of building integrated photovoltaics. We are working in a great way with respect to desensitized to solar cells. And therefore, uh, for energy conversion also, whatever titles or whatever research areas you are interested, we have a great dedicated group working in that. And the last one is energy storage. So energy storage, definitely you should have a dependence on batteries because even uh, the, during the welcome address also it was mentioned that Batteries as power sources is very, very essential to store energy. So even though this 100 year old, century old lead acid batteries are still finding their application, like the way coal is finding its relevance for a longer time. Now this is the time to switch over from lead acid to nickel metal hydride to nickel cadmium to lithium batteries. So country now has already created a thousand lithium cell making facility in Chennai. Because I'm coming from one institute called Electrochemical, Central Electrochemical Research Institute in the southernmost part of the country in, from a place called Karekudi, which is near Madurai. So there we have one dedicated Electrochemical Research Institute, which is the one and only research institute in the field of Electrochemical Science and Technology in the entire Asia. And there we have created this facility. This facility is created not in Karekudi, but in Chennai. We have our satellite center in Chennai. So there you can produce 1,000 cylindrical cells of 18650 configuration of lithium batteries. Therefore, whether it is lithium battery or sodium battery, yes, we have success formula, then supercapacitors, and now we are working in a big way on redox flow batteries also. Where are you going to use these redox flow batteries? For a country like India, places like Leh, Ladakh, Jammu, Kashmir, and Himalayas, wherever you have some kind of a grid-related supply issue, there and all, you can think about these redox flow batteries because it is for the massive scale application and it's a stationary power source. Even for redox flow battery, we have number of number of success formulas and technology leads. So this is about our energy. Now coming to water, we are working in a big way with respect to Jal Shakti mission. So Jal Shakti mission, our, one of the laboratories called NGRA, National, National Geographic Research Institute in Hyderabad. We have identified and we are deploying one technology, which is our own technology, just to identify how much is the water which is available underground. It is not only to trace the water alone, but also the metals and mineral value also underground, which we call it as heli technology. 
So this heli bone technology of NGRI is finding its application in a big way just to explore what are the metals as well as the water resources which are found underground. And water, everybody was talking about water for its purification, then effluent treatment, industry wastewater treatment. I think we have number of success stories which includes waste of wealth that comes under even water management. If you just happen to go to Hyderabad, please visit a place called the Bhavanapalli Vegetable Market. In that market, CSAR's technology, waste to wealth technology, the complete uh, waste from the market, it is collected and it is uh, just undergoing the process. It's a two-stage process. And 10 tons per day, that is the capacity of two reactors, five tons per day, five tons per day, two twin reactors are there. So the total capacity is 10 tons per day. There, the complete vegetable waste is getting converted into a cooking gas. And this gas is now getting stored in four big balloons. And there is a small uh, tower that is built, built very much nearer to that. From that tower, the gas is uh, supplied to the canteen of this Bonapalli market, which is uh, several meters uh, just away from this particular place. Meaning is, now they stopped buying LPG cylinders at all. They are not at all buying gas cylinders. They just use only this particular cooking gas that is getting generated from the market. It is not the only place where this technology is already established and coming out very successfully. In India, already we have established it in 20 different places, this kind of a waste to wealth making plants. This is with respect to solid waste management. And when you talk about the wastewater again, we have already adopted one village which is very much closer to Pochampalli. So there again, the dye industry related all the waste which is just getting mixed up with the other water. We have adopted that village. There also the technology is implemented and the water is now finding its reutilization. So whichever way you feel that we can work together and to serve for the country, because uh, in CSIR, it is Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. I stands for industry, I stands for Indian technology, I stands for indigenized technology. Therefore, we are fully geared up to work with industries. Already we are surrounded by a number of industries, but we are always open to any kind of consortia, any kind of working relationship. And therefore, I thought that this platform should be the initiating platform, that CSAR should also be considered by number of industries, number of researchers, a number of academia who are all present here. You should consider working with research organizations like CSAR because now we have understood the effect of team spirit. Just two days back, we all of us, we lifted our collar up and we said that we achieved, mission accomplished. It, is, it was not made possible by only one person. It was made possible by a big team. Because thousands of people, they made only one particular target and they were able to reach and we are all feeling proud. So now let us take only these three objectives. So let these three objectives be the target. And any number of us can join hands. We can work together, but we have to do justice. I'm ready. Are you ready? Please ensure. And thank you so much for the opportunity. I wish the conference every success. Namaskar. <laughs>